Um, I don't actually, I can't really put a date on when all of these, I started, when all of these problems started happening for me, but I can at a point when I noticed that being sad a lot wasn't completely normal and being constantly anxious and afraid and isolating yourself was abnormal behavior. Um, I was around 12 years old, uh, so I was in middle school and things were changing, like, you know, new school, new friends, new everything. Uh, throughout um, all of middle school, things were really weird. Things would go from, I was in seventh grade, a really hyperactive, talkative person who was extremely outgoing, tried in school. I was, I was friends with everybody, but I was also wasn't friends with everybody. I just talked to a lot of people. And then in eighth grade, I just shut myself down. I stopped talking to people. I just isolated myself. I wouldn't look people in the eye anymore. I, I just kind of let go of who I was, and I didn't want to have friends anymore because all my feelings were just getting worse and worse every single day. I couldn't. I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought that I was hopeless and everything was going to get better for me. So I just wanted to stay away from people so that if something bad happened to me, Excuse no one would get hurt. Could you bring the mic a little closer? Thanks. Okay. Um, when I went to high school, uh, a lot of said problems escalated a lot more. I didn't talk to anybody for my freshman and sophomore year. I just was picked on a lot. A lot of people always made fun of the way I looked or the way I acted, the way I dressed. And then I always made me feel really bad about myself. Um, the summer before sophomore year, I, that was when things really, really took a downturn for me. I. Uh, started starving myself. I ended up losing 16 pounds in under two weeks, and that pattern would continue on and on for to this day. It's still every once in a while I will just not eat for a week, and I can lose up to 10 pounds in a couple of like five days, maybe. I would, I just gave up on eating. I didn't drink water. I just malnourished myself as a form of self harm because I thought. It's not the same thing as cutting, so it's okay that I'm doing this, but I'm still feeling pain that I thought I deserved. Um, that when I started sophomore year of high school, I started cutting. It started out as a once in a while thing that I could cover up. I like it didn't. I didn't think that it was going to get really out of control, but it eventually turned into something that I was doing multiple times a day to multiple parts of my body. It completely took over my life, and for a year I thought I couldn't live without it. Um, I, I let it completely control me. Last, last year, um, everything got really bad to the point where I thought to myself, like, I'm done, I'm gonna try to kill myself. So, uh, around like the middle of March last year, I went out of my house around one in the morning. It was on one of the snow days. I wasn't wearing warm clothes, it was freezing out there. I went out to a set of train tracks near my house and I just stood on top of them and I waited for a train to come. I waited, it must have been two hours just standing there in the cold thinking about how much I hated my life and how much people had hurt me and how, how a lot of people had always put me down and tried to make me see, think that I was not good enough as a person and how I would never amount to anything. People that I loved, people that I didn't even know, everybody that I had ever met 
had put me down in some way. Best friends telling me that I'm a failure for self-harming. People telling me that I'm looking for attention when I stop eating. And that my problem was my own parents telling me that I need to get it together and that my problems basically weren't real. And I thought that was gonna be my last night. It should have been, but I, I gave up. I called a friend and I asked her to come pick me up. And I spent the night at her house that night. And that's the night that I realized that that's not gonna help me. No matter what I've been through, things that, like hearing voices in my head, people that I love more than anything telling me that I'm a failure and that I'm better off dead, hating myself, telling myself that I'm better off dead, telling myself that I'm worthless, putting myself down all the time. It's not, none of it is really true. Everyone deserves a happy life and everyone deserves to feel good about themselves. I shouldn't have let those people get to me. Someone recently told me that a good way to look at life is to never let your problems take control of yourself, like take control of your whole life. Always try to find a balance because we all have problems. Everyone in this room has problems in their life and they might, for some of us, they might be too much and for some people it might be, um, they might not do anything about it and you have to work, you have to try to find ways to balance that out and figure out what you're going to, how you're going to how you're gonna fix yourself because living that kind of life is not something that I'm proud of. I wish I hadn't lived that kind of life. I wish that I had realized that earlier. I wish that I knew that it was gonna get better one day. Yeah, I'm not completely better. I'm not gonna sit here and say like, I wake up every day and I'm happy and I love my life and I love myself. But I definitely don't wake up every day wishing I was dead anymore. And that's, that wasn't the way I wanted to live. try to be a little bit happier. Natalie, thank you so much. I'm so glad you picked up that phone and called a friend.